Can you 3D print parts for PC water cooling? It turns out yes. Yes you can, but I don't recommend it. Water cooling parts do two things. They transfer heat or they transport water. 3D printing, at least the kind that you can do at home, uses plastic, which is really bad at transferring heat. That's why every cooler and water block on the market uses copper or aluminium to do it. As I can't 3D print metal at home, and I bet you can't either, this restricts us to making the parts that move the water around the loop. And this is the main reason why I don't recommend using 3D printed parts. Water cooling is expensive, but most of that cost is sunk into the complex parts like the water blocks, radiators and pumps, which means the only parts that we are capable of actually printing are the parts that you can buy cheaply online, which will have a better quality of finish, be much safer and require zero effort. There really is no reason to print water cooling parts. Here is how I did it. The specific part that I wanted was something to drain my loop because I forgot to order that bit and I thought I would be able to design and print something quickly and probably save some money as well. Yeah, okay, I was being pretty optimistic. After I finished the project, I found this item on AliExpress, which is essentially exactly the same as what I made, but with a spinny thing, which I'm sure is extremely useful. The first thing to do when designing a printing project is to decide what material to use. I wanted my parts to be transparent, like the rest of my loop, so I decided to use a transparent PETG, which is one of the most optically clear filaments. ABS and polycarbonate also have transparent variants, but are more challenging to print with. PETG is also exactly the same plastic used in the tubing for my loop, so I know I'm not introducing anything that could be problematic. Okay, so to start with, we should go over the basics of transparent 3D printing. There are lots of variables that you can mess with, so I will give you this basic way of thinking about it first. Every time light is transferred from one medium to another, it will change direction, based on the condition of the face. To create something you can see through, the light must not change direction in order to preserve the image. If it does, it becomes translucent, not transparent. These two pieces of PETG tubing are identical, apart from the fact that one of them has been wet sanded with a fine grit sandpaper. The outer surface now scatters light as it passes through, making it translucent. To achieve this in 3D printing, the face that the light enters through and the face that it leaves through must be as flat as possible and gaps or bubbles inside the print must be prevented. I began by printing small blocks to test what effects I could achieve and found that when printing for maximum transparency you need a 100% infill with a 105 to 110% flow rate to make sure all those little bubbles are filled in before being wet sanded up to 1200 grit and then polished with a polishing compound. I also found that using smaller nozzle sizes and smaller layer heights improved clarity but increased print time significantly. I should also talk briefly here about water tightness. FDM 3D printing will often have tiny flaws, small bubbles, breaks between layers, etc. You often don't notice these flaws on your prints, but you will notice them when you try to make something watertight and it starts leaking. To print something that will hold water reliably for long periods, I advise adding extra shell layers in your slicer, 6 to 7, which will provide redundancy against flaws. In addition to this, I advise printing slow, like 25 to 30 millimeters per second, which should reduce the occurrence of these flaws. After you've done this, you may find that you also need to coat the internal faces of your print with a clear coat, lacquer, or some kind of resin to be completely sure that it is sealed. Just make sure it's one that can stand being submerged in water. My first attempt was designed to be sort of like a water distribution plate. It had a base part that would be partially infilled and translucent, and a thinner top piece which could be seen through and have threads for pipe fittings. The main problem I ran into, however, was that over-extruding the filament for the see-through plate caused a lot of blobs and other problems, which eventually caused the print to fail when they got in the way of the printer's motion. It was then that I realised that this design would also be too large and awkward to fit in my case anyway, so I moved on. I next played around with a sort of water pump form factor, where it had a small reservoir and a few threaded ports to insert fittings. My first iteration was printed all in one piece, and I think it could have worked, but it just didn't look very good, so I scrapped it. The next iteration had a reservoir as a separately printed element that I used vase mode or spiralize outer contour mode. This is where the model is printed with only one layer for its outer shell and it's done in one continuous motion. This is particularly advantageous when printing transparent filaments as it will make a very smooth print that avoids most of the artifacts that can reduce its transparency. 
The effect, I thought, was quite appealing, but unfortunately the TPU O-ring that I had printed didn't work. It was at this point that I went on an extended tangent to try and figure out how to print an effective TPU gasket or O-ring, and I never once got it to work. The result was never smooth enough and the TPU wasn't quite flexible enough. I looked for another solution and realised that you can buy O-ring cord from eBay, and if you cut it to size and superglue the ends together, you can make custom sized O-rings. I simplified my design further, uh, removing the reservoir completely, and it became essentially just a glorified three-way junction for the tubing. I experimented with a one-piece design for this too, but again, I did not like the look. It turns out it's very difficult to clean up the inside of a print like this, and the overhanging elements are a little messy, although they did print successfully. I settled on this design, which is the one that ended up in my computer. There is a base, translucent part with a partial infill, an o-ring made from o-ring cord purchased from eBay, super glued together, a fully infilled panel, which was small and simple enough to be over extruded and polished transparent, and a top piece designed to spread pressure from the screws more evenly over the o-ring. At first, the surface finishes were too rough to be properly watertight, so I had to sand them as flat as I could before coating with an acrylic clear coat. In the end, it does actually work well. It's been in my computer for many months now, without issue. I just don't recommend actually making it, because it's just easier, cheaper and safer to buy something almost exactly the same from the internet. Well that's about it. Obviously I haven't gone into any detail about how I modelled the part. Mostly that's because, again, you shouldn't do this. And also because this video is so niche that I would expect someone who actually wants to do this to have those skills already. I will be going over modelling techniques and designs in future though on more sensible projects. Thanks for watching. If you like this, do the usual YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, etc. I will be making more videos about practical 3D printing, which I hope won't be so niche.